It'll say Rebel there in the center. All the gauges will do a sweep and everything will come to life. Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here and today we're gonna be comparing the all new 2020 Ram Rebel to a 2020 Ram 2500 power wagon. So as always, we're gonna do a quick walk around from truck to truck comparing them. Both trucks are being provided to us by Larry H. Miller Dodge Ram Jeep Chrysler here in Sandy, Utah. So check out their inventory in the link below. If you wanna see driving impressions on the Rebel and on the power wagon, check out the links in the description below where I drive both of the vehicles. With that all being said, let's get into the video. Now let's start under the hoods of both of the trucks. Let's go to the Rebel first and foremost. Under the hood of the Rebel, we have a naturally aspirated 5.7 liter Hemi. This particular one has e-torque. Now power outputs are 395 horsepower and then 410 pound-feet of torque. In terms of fuel economy, it's gonna be good for 17 around town and then 22 on the highway. Power wagon, naturally aspirated 6.4 liter Hemi. It goes through an eight-speed automatic transmission, just like the Rebel. In terms of power outputs, it's 410 horsepower and then 429 pound-feet of torque. Fuel economy figures aren't released, um, but like I've said in the other videos, most people say they get about 14 to 15 miles per gallon roughly, and that's all. Let's go over things stylistically. Rebel first and foremost, it's got those cool little vents at the top of the hood, and you got kind of like this sport hood action happening up there. Full LED lights with the little Ram logo, tow hooks just down below with kind of like the front skid plate. And then you have the fog light just off to the side. Now going over the power wagon, you got the cool decal at the top. You got that little logo there on the side. Full LED lights with the Ram logo again in the front fog lights. This one has tow hooks, but it also has a winch from the factory. It does use synthetic cable, which is a lot safer than steel cable. You can see it hiding just behind there. But here's just one more look at the front end of both of the trucks. Now, coming around to the side, 275 millimeter, 285 millimeter, 18 inch rims, 17 inch rims, 33s, 33s. So the tire and rim setup is pretty close. On this, obviously, you can see has those fender flares suspension wise not nearly as high as the power wagon the power wagon's a two inch lift from the factory so it's a lot higher got the little hemi badging right there again that 2500 badge and then other than that ram on the side ram on the side this one's two-tone goes all the way down the back says power wagon on the side do have side steps from the factory no side steps but this one's also two-tone so they kind of match in that respect and then here's kind of like a look at the back of the bed. You can see there's kind of like a little bulge in the back of the bed there, whereas there it's pretty much flat all the way to the rear, but you do get fender flares on both. Here's the key fob on the Rebel, it says RAM on the back. You get a couple functions, your unlock, lock, and then remote start. If we remote start it, take just a second, and then that 5.7 liter Hemi will come to life. Which sounds good, but the uh, Power Wagon's exhaust definitely sounds better. Press it again, that'll shut it off and then if we unlock the truck all you have to do is just come to this latch and then press that and it is slow lowering it does have a spray and bed liner this one comes with a tonneau cover five foot seven bed got led bed lights there cool echo got a little cargo light at the top and then when you do it to lift up the bed really light just kind of throw it into place you have to put a little bit of force to get the shut fully got the key for the power wagon here it says ram in the back got your unlock lock remote start and tailgate release we're going to remote start it again so I'll press that twice. Fingers are stopped moving because it's cold, but the exhaust right here. Now you can just hear it sounds so much beefier. It's like chug, 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 chug. Anyways, shut it off, and then we can press the tailgate release, drop that down. This one's got a fancy button, whereas the Rebel didn't. Bed liner in the rear. See again, you've got the LED bed lights. This one's a six foot four bed, cargo light up top, and then. Lifting up the tailgate, super light. The Rebels feels lighter though. Now we're gonna go over elements on the Rebel. You've got the Ram logo back there, four x four Rebel. Dual outlet exhaust with a receiver hitch, all the plugins for towing. Towing capacity on this truck's just over 11,000 pounds. Payload's about 1,700, almost 1,800 pounds. Now onto the power wagon. Again, LED lights, they look pretty much identical on both the trucks. These are just a little bit larger. Pretty, actually they're about the same size. Anyways, Ram logo, power wagon. Again, plugins for towing. You got the receiver hitch just down below. This one does have a kick step, which is pretty cool. So you can kind of put your foot right here. That'll pop out. And then when you want to put it back in, you just gotta kick it in. 
Now, towing capacity is about just under, right around 10,000 pounds roughly. Payload's about 1,500 pounds, so the power wagon tows less and has lower payload than the Rebel. Head to the back. Opening up the panel here in the rear of the Rebel. This one's fully blacked out on the interior, so you got black trim, black leather. Really nice padding back here actually with the stitching. One of the speakers for the sound system. Here are the seats in the rear of the Rebel. They again have nice padding with the stitching, nice perforations on them as well. Cup holders, just gotta pull them down. They kind of pop out just like that. Rubber floor mats, got the ice buckets. And then you can pick up the seats for extra storage. And then you can see just down there, you've got a couple USBs, a full power outlet, some vents, cup holders at the top of the nice black trim. And then here's one more look at the rear of the Rebel. Now opening up the door in the back of the power wagon. I like the Rebel door panel better, but anyways, you got kind of like the padding right here with the black trim. You got the leather here with the stitching, little door handle. And then you got the seats here in the back. Nice padding on the seats with the leather, nice stitching as well. And then we can open that up. Cup holders. I feel like the cup holders in the Rebel were cooler. Anyways, ice buckets, and then you can lift up the seat for extra storage. You got storage just under there. And then down below over here, there's uh, more charging stations, so a couple USBs, all the floor mats and all that kind of stuff, and bye. Keyless entry in the Rebel, so one touch to lock it, to unlock it. Put your hand on the back of the door handle and it'll unlock. You got little mirrors here, they are power folding. Now we look at the panel here at the front. Again, the nice padding with the stitching all across. More of the padding with the kind of like black trim. Door handle, got a couple speakers with a sound system. All of your window controls, power folding mirror button is right there to fold those in. And then we've got our seat controls right here. It says Rebel there on the side of the seat. As you can see, we got the stitching, power adjustments on the seats, and then you got the pedal layout just down below with the little hood latch right in that area. Parking brake, power adjustable pedals, light controls, you got your fog lights, cargo light, and then the steering wheel is gonna be manually adjustable. And here's one more look at the front. Keyless entry on the power wagon, one touch to lock it. To unlock it, put your hand on the back of the door handle. These have the trailer mirrors, so you can kind of like pick this up. And it does have blind spot monitoring. It is power folding though, so if we come and look at the door panel, you can see the door panel here. Black trim with the gray trim, again with the more black trim and the stitching. That's the button to power fold in the mirrors on the power wagon. That's to adjust the little convex mirror on the side right there. Memory seats. And then here is the seat in the front. So, it says power wagon there. Fully power adjustable there on the side. And then you've got the little pedal layout just down below, the parking brake, light controls so like the fog light, cargo light, power adjustable pedal control, and then the steering wheel is gonna be manually adjustable. And here's a look at the front again. Start with the Rebel, put your foot on the brake, push the push start. It'll say Rebel there in the center. All the gauges will do a sweep and everything will come to life. Here's the steering wheel on the Rebel. If we zoom in, got the Ram logo there in the center. That's for the cruise control. You've got your gear selector to shift the gears yourself. Voice commands, that's for the center stack. Nice stitching here with the leather, kind of grippier there on the side. Radio controls on the back of the steering wheel. That is the stock for the turn signal and also the windshield wiper stock and to flash the high beams. Got our gauge cluster here in the center. RPMs on the left side, on the right side, you've got the speed and then you can kind of go into that center stack which gives you like the fuel economy that it says right now. And then a couple of the other little bits of information like your trailer tow info, audio, messages. Now I'm just reading what's at top and that's all. Got a little 12 volt at the top there and then we've got our full screen system happening here. 12 inch display. Got our controls for the parking brakes, tow haul mode, stability control. Trailer brake controls already integrated. Radio controls on the sides of the touch screen. Now the 12 inch display is pretty cool. If we go with like the dual zone climate control, you got the controls tab. This one does have a backup camera which if we pop it in reverse that'll pop up. See that it has little trajectory lines right there and then you can zoom in on the receiver hitch if you need to, obviously to hook up to a trailer make that a whole lot easier. Um, but other than that, you can do drag and drop with functions down to that little sidebar and touchscreen super responsive, super good unit and it's identical to what's in the power wagon as you'll see in a minute. This is our gear selector to go through the different gears. Got your two wheel drive, your four wheel low, your four wheel high, true neutral, auto stop start, your hill descent control and then your axle lock is right there. Full center console area, so we've got the RAM logo at the top of the stitching. Can pick it up. Got a little USB right there. Can pick it up again. You got a little metric table right there. This slides backwards and forwards. 
Got little phone holders in this area with a power outlet just down there. And then a couple more USB ports in that area. Glove box area says Rebel there on the front of it and you can open it up, dual glove box here. Plenty of storage space, you'll notice that looks identical to what's in the power wagon and then you've got kind of like the dash with the stitching at the top. Up top here, I've got the power rear sliding window. No sunroof, but this does have a black headliner. Universal garage door openers are up here. And other than that, that is all. Let's start up the power wagon. Just push the push start, and then it'll say power wagon. And everything will come to life. Got the steering wheel there in the center. If we zoom in, we've got the Ram logo. Cruise control on the side with the gear selector. Got this nice stitching, and the gr steering wheel's grippy on the side right there. Phone controls on the other side. And then you got all the controls for the little center stack. Radio controls are on the back of the steering wheel, just like on the Rebel. And then you get your stock for the windshield wiper, turn signal, and you flash the high beams. Got our center stack right here. RPMs on the left side, on the right side, you got the speed, and then we can kind of zoom in right there. Got a couple different menus that you can scroll through on this. Looks pretty much identical to what's on the Rebel. Ooh, 11 miles per gallon. Yeah, it's got all the same menus that is on the Rebel. Got a little 12 volt up here, and then this one has the 12 inch display, identical to the Rebel. So again, climate controls flank either side. Parking sensors, your tow haul mode, stability control, trailer brake control, radio controls on the side, and then everything else like the backup camera system, for example. You can see that that is all the same with the little zoom in on the receiver hitch. Got parking sensors just like on the Rebel. Um, ventilated seats, the Rebel does not have that, so Power Wagon has that on the Rebel. Um, other than that, you can drag and drop with all the functions and functionality on this is identical. This is the shifter for that eight speed automatic. You do get your front and rear locker. You got the rear locker you can just go into. And then you got your held descent control, sway bar, disconnect. So off-road capability on this is gonna be significantly better. Got a couple USBs down there with some extra storage in this area. Got our full kind of like center seat area with a little USB. Couple cup holders here. Turns into a third seat, which is kind of hard to use because the four wheel drive shifter is right there. So. Yeah, leg room is not plentiful for this third seat, but you get extra storage underneath that part of the seat. And then over here it says power wagon again, and it's a dual glove box. And that's all. We've got a sunroof up top, so this one actually has a sunroof. Power rear sliding window again. So you got the window that you can open and close there in the back. And then other than that, things are pretty simple. Black headliner controls for the garage door opener and that is all now let's talk about pricing quickly this power wagon stickers for about sixty seven thousand dollars that rebel stickers for about fifty nine thousand dollars so we've got an eight thousand dollar price difference between the two trucks so i had this decision proposed to me a while ago and i obviously ended up choosing a rebel before i bought my raptor that i have now but the reason that I think the Rebel is better is just a better overall package. The Power Wagon is fantastic on the off-road and would destroy a Rebel on the off-road, no doubt. However, the Rebel interior-wise is a little bit nicer than the Power Wagon. And I love the center console on the Rebel. That's just such a cool item on it as well. And then the other thing is the Rebel tows more, has a higher payload. Just overall is a better daily usability truck. So if you want a truck that's better for daily use, definitely the Rebel wins. If you want something that's better in the off-road, the Power Wagon wins. But as an overall comparison between price and all that kind of stuff, I'm gonna say the Rebel wins this comparison. I want you guys to let me know in the comment section down below which truck you would buy if you had a choice between the Power Wagon and the Rebel. But again, a big shot and thank you to Larry Schmiller, Dodge Ram, Jeep Chrysler here in Sandy, Utah for providing us with both trucks. Check out their inventory in the link below if you're in the market for a Dodge, Ram, Jeep, or Chrysler. I will see all of you in that next video.